Welcome back. In the book, The Enforcers, the Cape Town underworld is laid bare, explored through the characters who control the protection industry, the bouncers and the security at nightclubs and adult clubs. At the center of this turf war is Nafiz Modak, who's the latest kingpin to have seized control of the industry. Investigative journalist Karen Doley has followed Modak and his predecessors for six years as power has shifted in the nightclub security industry. And she focuses on how closely connected the criminal underworld is with the police services she joins us live from Cape Town to talk about her new book Karen thank you so much for your time thank you for having me so let's talk about what inspired you to write such a book I mean the roots of the book where can we trace it from well throughout my career since around 2012 I've been following different strands that have combined to make the book so I've been looking into policing in the Western Cape spats within police in the Western Cape I've been following gang trends as violence has ebbed and flowed and also looking at the way politicians have reacted so from about 2012 and over the years I only actually recently realized that all these different threads combine and when you look at it as a whole that's actually what the underworld in Cape Town is a combination of all that right so one of the things you mention is and I you you get it in the beginning of the book you mentioned that poking and prodding the underworld especially um, can disturb an ever mutating species from which there is no set or form of protection and based on the characters you've described in this book some of them come across as very dangerous individuals as an investigative journalist I mean Surely I'm assuming there's a really fine line between covering a story and also, um, you know, looking into your well-being and your safety. Mm -hmm. How have you had to also, you know, protect yourself while making sure that this book is put together? Well, in 2017, I did receive a death threat that was because I was writing about a national firearm smuggling investigation where police, key police investigators in the Western Cape uncovered that firearms meant to be destroyed or in police custody were actually being channeled back to gangsters. In that case, the company I worked for at the time organized private security for me, which is ironic given the subject matter of the book. And previously in another incident where a suspected underworld figure made a bit of an off comment when, quest when I sent him an email question about why he was at a specific place with a police officer. I received something that, and that also resulted in private security. And then this is my job, and because it's sort of seen as dangerous territory to cover, I obviously do take precautions, and I'm very wary of what I, or who I encounter, etc. So perhaps you can tell us why the private security industry is so contested and the linkages between the actual industry and the Cape Flat gangs. One of the things I picked up through looking into private security, nightclub security, the entertainment industry and security related to that was that a number of sources said that opening a private security company could be a way to get your hands on firearms. That seems to, or that's allegedly the case in at least one incident here in the Western Cape. So what happens is a suspected gang boss or a gang boss, for instance, could get a proxy, someone else, to do the paperwork, register the company accordingly, and that gang boss then uses other people to actually get hold of firearm licenses under the guise of those licenses being used by the company. There are many more links of, for example, um, we have suspects who are appearing in court at the moment with big burly men and in some cases these men have been armed so they laps overlaps and yeah it's a very murky sort of diffused line speaking of murky and diffused line there are various characters in your book and the one that stands out to me has to be major general jeremy very i mean he's helped incarcerate many uh gangsters and he's headed up various uh probes into the activity happening around the cape flats but he himself also seems to be a subject of many claims against him uh, some alleging that he's involved in organized crime how does the reader interpret Jeremy as an individual and what he stands for 
I think if you read the book as a whole, as a reader, you will make up your mind on which side of a line General Viri falls on. We must also bear in mind that he is a police investigator who has looked into the most high profile suspects in the Western Cape and further afield. And what we see now politically in the country is allegations of spies setting people up, etc. We need to also superimpose that on how General Vieri is viewed and claims made against him. So let's talk about Nafiz Modak for a bit. I mean, in the beginning, I mentioned that he's the latest kingpin to have seized control. How has his career evolved in the past time or past few years that you've been um, covering the story? Well, I would say in 2016, his name, and I'm speaking as a journalist, his name wasn't really in the media. Um, there was an incident early in 2017 when he sort of cemented himself as this figure who is going to show I am taking control of nightclub security. It's not to say that that was illegal, that is subject of a criminal trial at the moment. But since 2017, his profile media-wise has increased. That's also because he is on trial. He is the subject of several investigations. Just quickly, is it worth having a commission of inquiry into what's happening with the Western Cape gangs and the linkages with the police? I absolutely think so. I think that a police or a firearm meant to be with police that siphoned off to a gang, that is a form of state capture. And I think residents in the Western Cape, particularly on the Cape Flats, who don't have, who don't have knowledge of the sort of very high level fight, they deserve to be heard. They deserve to have a commission of inquiry. Um, I think it was 1,666 murdered people within six years with police guns. I mean, that alone should be the basis for a commission of inquiry. All right, Karen, thank you so much for your time. Let's leave it there. Karen Doley is the author of The Enforcers, looking at uh, Cape Town's deadly nightclub battles. The book is available at your nearest bookstore. So our recommended book of the week is So You Want to Build a Startup, and it's written by Matthew Butland. It's a frank account of the difficulties and the fun of building a business. It's filled with practical advice for entrepreneurs on how to open the door to opportunity, expect tales of crazy business expansion and personal growth as well as a complete ecosystem overview for South African startups. That's a wrap from us. Your weather details after the break. Goodbye.